Dear friends and followers, welcome back to my channel and lovely greetings from the Fly 747 simulator here in Bensheim near Frankfurt, Germany. Captain Oli and I want to show you in this video how to perform a takeoff with this beautiful 747 simulator. We'll focus on the procedure, the FMA mode changes and SOPs to familiarize yourself what is actually happening behind the scenes during a takeoff. Today's video is brought to you by Fly747. Believe me when I say this is the best privately owned 747 flight simulator I have ever sat in. All switches and buttons are original as the cockpit used to be an actual Boeing 747 which Ollie had cut off and then converted into this beautiful sim. So if you are preparing for your next sim check or airline assessment or if you just want to experience a fun flight with Ollie in the 747, go and check out his website in the description box below. Okay, let's get right to it. So Ollie and I have lined up on runway 31 left at JFK Airport. There's going to be a left-hand seat takeoff, meaning Captain Ollie is the pilot flying and I'm his pilot monitoring. So during this takeoff, I want you to better understand the flight mode enunciations you will see on the PFD. Now throughout the takeoff and the initial climb phase, they will change and I need you to understand what they mean. So as we look at our PFD, we have the auto throttle modes on the upper left hand corner. In the middle, you have the roll modes and on the right, the pitch modes. So currently in this picture, they are all green, which indicates that this mode is engaged. Below you see in white LNAV and VNAV, indicating these modes are armed. And when a green box appears, this shows that there has been a mode change. So let's go to the starting position. We have no auto throttle mode engaged at the moment as Oli hasn't advanced the thrust levers yet. Then we have toga, so take off and go around for the roll mode. Now this means that the flight directors will command wings level. And in our case, LNAV is in white, meaning it is armed to guide us along the departure route as soon as we are airborne. Next to that, we have the pitch mode, which is also in toga. And this will help you after rotation to aim for 15 degrees pitch, but more on that in a minute. So we now have our takeoff clearance and Oli has released the parking brake and then he will say, My controls. And I will respond, your controls. And Oli will reply, Setting takeoff thrust. And I will say, checked as he advances the thrust levers to 60%, then momentarily allows the engines to stabilize and then pushes the toga switches. By doing so, he activates the auto throttle system. Now you as the pilot monitoring can see that on the FMA, thrust ref has become the active mode as indicated by the green box around thrust ref. So what is thrust ref? Thrust ref is the reference thrust limit you have calculated on your onboard performance tool and then inserted into the FMC on the thrust limit page during the B4 start procedure. So in our example, we selected derated takeoff thrust with an assumed temperature of 40 degrees, giving us a reference thrust limit of 101.6% on N1, as you can see on the upper ICAS. Meaning as Oli pushes the toga switches, the thrust levers will automatically advance to 101.6% N1 and not more. At the same time, Oli puts some forward pressure on the control column. By doing so, you increase the nose wheel steering effectiveness, especially during strong crosswind and aft CG conditions. Simultaneously, Oli is using the rudder to maintain on the runway centerline and the yoke, hence the ailerons, to keep the wings level during acceleration. We will focus on rudder and aileron inputs during crosswind takeoffs in another video. Okay, now we can see the airspeed is gaining on the speed tape with a trend indication going in the right direction. Now the first mode change happens at 65 knots. By now, thrust rev has advanced the thrust levers to the required setting and then switches to hold mode. Once hold enunciates, the auto throttle cannot change thrust lever position anymore, but you as the pilot can move them manually. At the same time, it protects against thrust lever movement if a system fault occurs. So very simply put, hold mode briefly puts the auto throttle on standby 
meaning you as the pilot could manually add more thrust if you wish to. But you can't reduce the thrust below the thrust ref except for a rejected takeoff. By doing so, your first action is to simultaneously close the thrust lever and manually disconnect the autothrottle. More on RTOs in a future video. Next up, I will call out 80 knots thrust set and get confirmation by Oli replying with Checked. Now important to note, there are five main reasons for the 80 knots call out. First, it's an airspeed indication check. Are all airspeed indicators showing the same speed? Secondly, both pilots check that the required thrust setting has been automatically set by the autothrottle system or does it need manual adjustments? This is the point where the pilot flying should relax any forward pressure on the control column to the neutral position. Fourth, it reminds the pilots that they are now in the high speed regime of the takeoff roll and should only reject the takeoff before V1 for the following reasons. Fire warnings, engine failures, predictive wind shear warnings, or if the airplane for any reason is unsafe or unable to fly. And number five, the pilot monitoring needs the checked confirmation from the pilot flying as it also is an incapacitation verification. At 100 knots, you don't really see any difference except for the wind and ground speed reading in the upper left-hand corner on the ND and internally the FMC records the barometric altitude as the airplane accelerates through 100 knots. Now this altitude is then used to activate LNAV and VNAV, enables autothrottle activation after 400 feet if it wasn't activated before 50 knots, commands acceleration for flap retraction, and sets climb thrust if an altitude has been selected. From then on, nothing really changes. So we continue. Then comes a very important callout, the V1 callout at your previously calculated and entered V1 speed. So the pilot monitoring calls out V1 or the automatic callout on the 747-8 does it for you. The pilot flying physically removes their hand from the thrust lever to the yoke and from now on, it's a go decision. In case of an engine failure, fire warning, unreliable airspeed, etc., neither pilot shall command or initiate a rejected takeoff as the remaining runway length could not be sufficient to stop the aircraft in time. And secondly, the pilot flying has to have both hands on the yoke or control column to rotate and fly the aircraft, especially during gusty crosswind conditions or in case of an engine failure. I did a whole video on takeoff speeds. You might want to check that out. Next up is V rotate. The pilot monitoring calls out rotate at the calculated rotation speed. Okay, this is the point where a lot of things can go wrong, especially for pilots with little experience. They might over rotate, pulling too harshly on the yoke, potentially risking a tail strike or rotate too slowly leading to an increased takeoff distance and decreased obstacle clearance. So this is where good simulator training is key to ace the rotation. So the ideal rotation pitch rate is approximately 2.5 degrees per second. Lift off attitude is achieved in approximately three to five seconds, depending on airplane weight and thrust setting. Okay, what does it mean, lift off attitude? If we look at this video right here, you can see that at rotation speed, the nose slowly comes up as the pilot firmly is pulling on the yoke. Now let's count the seconds until the main gear lifts off. Approximately four seconds. Now if you apply the ideal rotation pitch rate of 2.5 degrees per second, that would result in 10 degrees pitch after 4 seconds, which is the correct liftoff pitch attitude. So take a look at the radio altimeter just as we reach 10 degrees, indicating that we are airborne. You then have safe tail clearance assured and 2 seconds later you have the desired 15 degrees pitch which gives you a screen height of 35 feet and an obstacle clearance and should result at V2 plus 10 knots. 
So our V2 is 150 knots. Okay, we are airborne. Now, after liftoff, you should use the attitude indicator as the primary pitch reference, plus the flight director in conjunction with indicated airspeed and other flight instruments is then used to maintain the proper vertical flight path. Now, a few more things happen during liftoff. The more obvious one is that LNAV becomes the active roll mode at 50 feet and moves the roll bar of the flight director to fly towards the active route. If we didn't arm LNAV, for instance, if the tower controller advised us to fly a specific heading after takeoff, you could dial in the heading on the MCP heading window, climb 400 feet and then advise your pilot monitoring to press heading select and then the roll mode switches to heading select and the roll bar of the flight director moves in the respective direction. But back to our scenario. Now, as the plane is going airborne, the pilot monitoring checks the vertical speed and barometric altitude, showing a climb and then calls out positive rate. The pilot flying agrees with the indication on their PFD and then calls out gear up. The pilot monitoring then places the gear lever into the up position. Side note, the auto brake system got disarmed by the air ground sensor, but the wheels are automatically slowed down, meaning the pilots do not have to apply the brakes as the gear retracts as you would do on a GA plane. So as we climb further to 400 feet, the pitch mode is still in toga, which helped us initially to maintain a pitch command target of V2 plus 10, hence 15 degrees after our liftoff attitude. Now VNAV has become the active pitch mode. To be exact, VNAV speed. This means that VNAV takes the current indicated airspeed at 400 feet, in our example, 174 knots, but not greater than V2 plus 25 knots, and then commands the flight director pitch bar to maintain that speed. And it will do so until we reach the acceleration height of 1500 feet. At the same time, at 400 feet, the auto throttle mode went from hold to thrust ref, meaning we are still maintaining takeoff power, or in our case, derated takeoff with an assumed temperature of 40 degrees. So we are now climbing with thrust ref, as just discussed, LNAV roll mode is maintaining us on the entered route, VNAV speed is controlling the speed by pitch attitude until we reach the acceleration height of 1500 feet. Now watch what happens next. See that jump in the speed bug or the command speed and the lowered pitch? VNAV was informed by our previous inputs into the FMC during the B4 start procedure that we've reached the acceleration height and commands the pitch bar of the flight director to a lower pitch to catch up with the command speed or the speed bug. Now the command speed has automatically increased five knots below the takeoff flap placard speed. So we've taken off with flaps 20, so the maximum speed for flaps 20 is 230 knots, minus five knots equals 225 knots, perfect. At the same time, the power setting was set to climb one thrust as we previously entered into the FMC, which very often is lower than the takeoff power. Therefore, 1500 feet is also our thrust reduction height. Now this means we're still in thrust ref as the auto throttle takes climb one power setting from the FMC as VNAV did for the acceleration height. So the next step is to retract the flaps to 10 degrees. So the pilot flying commands. Flaps 10. The pilot monitoring checks if the current airspeed is above the flap maneuvering speed places the flap lever to 10 degree detent and calls out flaps moving 10 when the flap lever position turns magenta on the flap position indicator. As the flaps retract, VNAV speed keeps adjusting the speed and pitch for always five knots below the flaps placard speed. For example, here we are at flaps 10, so the placard speed minus five knots equals 235 knots. Bingo. This step repeats itself until flaps are commanded in the up position and once they are in up, meaning the plane is in a clean configuration, the pilot monitoring places the landing gear lever to off, sets the anti-ice switches back to auto or off, 
and verifies that the packs are operating correctly. The pilot flying will then ask for the after takeoff checklist, which reads landing gear up and off, flaps up. Our FMA will then read thrust ref as it still remains in climb one. LNAV is still following our route and VNAV speed is pitching for 254 knots until we reach 10,000 feet as you can see on the VNAV climb page. Again, as mentioned before, all these settings were entered during the pre-flight and before start procedure. I have to admit, the before start procedure is worth doing an entire video about it. For now, I hope you enjoyed this detailed video about taking off in a Boeing 747. And on that bombshell, here is your checklist for today. Subscribe to my channel, check, activate the notification bell, check, follow my Instagram account and Ollie's Instagram account, check, perform a touch and go at my website and Ollie's website. And don't forget, a good pilot is always learning. Wishing you all the best. You're Captain Joe.